Thanks, Johnny. Fuck. Ha ha ha. You blew it. And I, it's on video. I, <laughs> they all get to see you blew it. I was so sure that we had been unprotected. Scrub. That this is now. Scorizo. Let's just so you know, did you see, like, I didn't even reach in and say protected or unprotected. How, how confident was I? Scrub. I was pretty confident, guys. Turns out my confidence was. Not, not real. Scrub. Yeah, it was uh, two, two scrubs in the tub. <laughs> <laughs> now are you it ready? wasn't almost as loading. Oh, it's loading. Um, did you, uh, yo, I was in San Francisco this weekend. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about it on the back. Okay. But, um. This is so people think I'm like a thoughtful, kind of insightful person. I wonder what it is about this pose that makes people think. Do you know what I mean? What it is, what is it, why, how come nobody, how come people didn't start this? What about this here? What's that mean? That means I have an idea. That's right. But, but this here, like how come people didn't just do this? Because that looks shitty. But what's the thinker? This is like, there's statues like that. Yeah, but why? That's what I'm saying, why? Because it looks dope. You put your finger up your nose and you go, oh, why didn't they make a statue of a yeah, guy doing that? Because like that sucks. But I sit like this when I shit too. But you look way better like that. Like, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Unprotected. Hello, hello. I'm sorry hello, you guys who are not watching and just listening missed that go to wicked two minutes. Go to forward slash get and you can see Josh screw up the unprotected podcast. Wow, that was very Pope of you. Oh, hell, President Wolf. By the way, Josh Wolf. Pretty Prince. Prince and the Wolf. Uh, how you doing, man? Good. You know, cool. better because you already wrecked the podcast before it started, so I'm already super happy. You like it when I fuck up. I love it. It starts me off laughing. I, you know what's funny is that <laughs> the Prince and the Wolf fans who interact with you on Twitter or also who show up to my live shows, they have caught on to the fact that even if I say we're going to talk about something at the beginning of the show, there's a pretty good chance. Sixty percent. Yeah, we're not going to talk about it. numbers that I yeah. think we'll put out there. And you know what's funny is that what I love, this is what why you and I work well together. Because your response to those people is, yeah, man, I know. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I, yeah, yeah. You, I think you, tried, you said once, you were like, I tried one time, and then I realized. Like, I'm 42. Yeah. I am who I am. <laughs> Yeah, you know, they'll be like, man, this and that and yeah, that. I'm, I'm like, like, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah, right me too. On. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm like, yeah, me too, man. Like, I love you still, and I hope you dig it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for screwing it up. Yeah. Usually the only interaction I get is either super funny or is just homies correcting all the things that I screw up. They'll be like, actually, that guy was a welterweight, not a lightweight. Uh, that guy's from Liverpool, not fucking Spain or whatever. Yeah. I said they were from. I'm like, oh, right on. Yeah. Thanks. But Sorry, the other no. parts, my opinions. Those, well, that's the real part. Where, I, yeah, no, I actually appreciate it because yeah. I'm I, I've seen a lot of wrestling, and some of those like things blur in. One time I said, uh, wrestler X was the first female. I think I said Beth Phoenix was, and they were like, dude, what about China? And I'm like, dude, how do you forget China? So I actually uh, appreciate it, and I, most of the time they do it in kind of a dick way, but meaning to be funny. Yeah, and it makes me laugh, so it works. You and I, I tweeted you this, and you saw it. Everybody, look into my eyes. Oh, look uh, into my eyes. Let me look. Charlotte Flair tweeted me and said she would love to come on the podcast. The Queen. Now, for From those of you who don't know who Char City. Charlotte Flair is, everyone Rick on friggin' Flair's Earth. daughter. How amazing would it be if she came? Women's on? champion, probably. Actually, this would be a good debate. I'll say. Top wrestler, top women's wrestler in the division, and I, that'll actually make some dude, people disagree with me, and they should, because there's some other girls that are right there with her, and maybe Asuka, top shelf, maybe we take her out of the equation, but uh, I would challenge you, and please, that's a conversation that I like. Show me someone who's better on the mic, and in the ring, and just owns their character more than her. There, there might be, but. You come up with that. All right, I, and there are two things real quick I want to get to. Uh, first, about her. You know one of the reasons I want to have her and you on the podcast together? I know exactly why. I'm really fascinated. Legacy kids. Yeah. Yeah, I know exactly why. I'm I already know what questions I'm going to ask her. I have so many for the two of you yeah. 
so many in, 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 in to, to see how you guys, and if you wouldn't mind, look, I'm super curious because as important as her dad is to her field, I could I could argue that your dad was equally as important to the Latino comedy community. Oh yeah. Okay. He just didn't have enough. He didn't have he ample had the time. Years. To, right. Right. He but, didn't have the but years. But in this short amount of time. But he permeated culture in the way Ric Flair permeated culture. A hundred percent. And it was beyond people watching wrestling. And in my father's case, there were people who had never seen Chico and the Man, yeah. and they were all going, "Looking good." And your so. father, like Ric Flair, inspired a generation of people like. Him and they both get, partied yes. way too hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neither one, and Rick has said this in interviews, n neither one was a good good enough father. It was a lot of pressure on me, a lot of pressure on Charlotte in a field that she never even saw herself being in. She sort of went, I'll let her tell her own story. Yeah. But she went into wrestling for other reasons besides her father, and it's a beautiful and, and tragic story with an unbelievably perfect ending. Um, but dude, the, the difference, Freddie. And she, by the way, I had big tailor-made shoes to yes, fill. Dude. She had big tailor-made boots to fill, and we both did at different levels. But but my, it's so, and I'd be curious to hear what you both feel like the differences and the struggles, uh, in not what's easier, but the differences in the path when the legacy you're following is still performing, oh, yeah. and when the legacy you're following is really like, you know, it's like, look, uh, Marilyn Monroe and James Dean will always be these mythical creatures because we never saw them get old. Right. Right. Do you know what I mean? Right. It's one of the reasons, guys, in my mind, that Marilyn Monroe is still Marilyn Monroe and James Dean is still James Dean because our only images of them are when they were young and beautiful and at the top of their game. Absolutely. So it's a, it's a different pressure for you because your dad was always... The only well, dad we ever let's saw. Let's get into that dad. when we bring her on. Yeah, but okay. let's give him the but rundown for today's. You podcast. got it. Yeah, I'm sorry, but I'm because we're already like ten in. I'm, so, but I'm, I'm because <laughs> I'm, I'm so, I'm really so passionate about I know, that. But you so, gotta it'd be so in interesting. Here. Okay, uh, okay. So we're gonna do the rundown. Also, I want to do a recipe because I tried a recipe today, and I want to see if you, I want if it will work. It's back at the house right now, and I, I didn't look it up online. I was going by guess and feel. Okay. So I, I, I want to, I want to talk to you about a recipe. Let's do it. Um, I know you want to talk. Uh, UFC, because we I actually gonna watched. Tell, we gotta go through this again. No, I'm gonna if wrap. You it. Tell okay. them the rundown. Right. Before you wrap it, then they already know. Okay. Did you? Did we go over this last week too? Did the, you told me that last Just week? Just in a cup. <laughs> the people know. They know. They love their king, like me. But you know, three, three times, I think the over under is three. It's either two or four. <laughs> this is why. If it's only two, then that's that's not that bad for you. If it's four, then that's rough sauce. But this is why you and I work well together. <laughs> because you were not angry at me. You understand that that's just the way my brain works. Yeah, man. And you just sometimes you paddle hard on the on the left side, and I'm like paddle right. <laughs> yeah. And for whatever reason, you just double down on the left and paddle harder. So I'm like, all right, we're just going to do a whole full circle. And then when we come back around, I'll just paddle extra hard on the right, and then boom, we're back on the river. <laughs> oh, my God. Rolling in the <laughs> All right. All right, baby. You ready guy. for the wrap? Are you? That's the only question. Are you? You're already crying. It's good, man. Your eyes are literally legit. You're like Denzel Washington oh. in Courage Under Fire when he doesn't say anything for like a minute and then he just beep and just drops that one. Oh, dude, I watched That's Man the power on Fire. Tier right there. This oh, one. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, did they cry in that one? I don't think so. Yes. He drops a tear in that one? He drops a tear when he finds out she's still alive. Ah. He's on that rooftop saying he's got his brother. He just shot off his brother's hand. And he goes, life for a life. Life for a life. Yeah. And, he, and he's like, okay. He's like, I'll give you her back. He's like, who? And when she said, <clears throat> ask oh, I her. I remember he goes, I will give her your life. Yes. Or your life. Yeah, I, I remember And that. he even says, El ask wolf. her, ask El her what, the, what she calls her bear. She calls him Pinky Bear. Yeah. yeah. All right, so um, I watched that this weekend. So. I wish you had more time. Yep. Yeah.
Damn it, that's a great line. Now listen, the way he cut that is the same way William oh. Shatner used to cut lines and cut a lot of shit for that pause acting. But I'll give you this. That's the best line in the movie, and it's because he did the weird pauses God, for no reason. God, it was so <laughs> good when he, he was... Now yeah. it's my fault we're sidetracked. No, but now but I'm going to beatbox. Here we go. But nope, was, here we let go. Let me ask you a question. Nope. <laughs> One question. Was that the scene? He's on the hood of the car. Yeah, the guy with the bomb up his Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, amigo, amigo. What, no, 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 no. You don't need to do this. I wish you had... He's putting on his jacket, right? More rhymes. Okay, here we go. Toots, 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 toots. Here we are again, my friend. You're looking at the wolf and the friends. We're in a new studio. It's Tuesday, here we go. Today we talk about the WWE and a little bit about Ronda Rousey. I watched a UFC fight. I was high, I stayed up late that night, and I saw some guys get punched. <laughs> <laughs> I, that good. was not that terrible. That was on me. That was on me, you man. You know what I think? I you think were A+. Plus. I think you're used to only going. <laughs> Could have been it. You changed your cadence yeah, up on me, sorry. and I, instead of just staying to my beat, I got cocky and tried to go to your beat, mm -hmm. and I'm not good enough to make that move. Yeah, and I'm not good enough to stay on the same beat. Well, the, hence... These raps, but you know what? I think they're working. getting better. You did the WWE Ronda Rousey move, and look, yeah, that's I think, all that matters. I think they're getting better, man. All right, so let's give them the real rundown. What are we talking about? <laughs> uh, I want to talk to you about a recipe. Uh, we're gonna yep. talk about UFC, uh, we're gonna talk about WWE, Thompson uh, Till, Ronda Rousey, mm -hmm. Nia Jax. Uh, we got a new uh, Mount Rushmore. Somebody suggested of war movies, which I think is a really good one. That's big baller. Um, and did we? Get a chance to talk about that I finally saw Black Panther? No, but I saw Solo, and I'll do a little spoiler-free review. Okay, should we, should we, let me just start with San Francisco. Do it. Guys. Comedy shows. Prince and the Wolf fans. North again. Cow. Amazing. And, um, What club were you at? What theater? Cobbs. Cobbs is a great club. But you know what I did this weekend that I've only done twice before that was so much fun? And it took like a, I do it late shows that people will, don't mind staying a little bit. I, I play I Want It That Way on the guitar, and I have three people from the audience. Did you do that with Jewel once? Different, different. Yeah, different. But, oh, I did that on my show with Jewel. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's money, um, dude. That's so money. I play I Want It That Way on guitar, and I have three people from the audience come on stage and do interpretive dance to the song behind me. Yes, and then disgusting. I, and the winner gets $50 for their service. That's big time. So this weekend in San Francisco, Oh, you're in NorCal where the artists Dude, won over it. They're doing interpretive dance when they wake up in the morning. Amazing. It was so Eating great. Eating granola in hemp made flip flops. <laughs> it was so interpretive great. dancing. And then you just happen to ask them to do it that. They're like, yes. Uh, we would all like to partake. It was so good, <laughs> man. But having such a good time at the shows, everybody. And Did let you me have just, family up there with you? Uh, Beth came up with me for oh, the nice. weekend. And she's Ali. You know, when Beth seems to come, the hotels give me better views. <laughs> um, but let me just say, Trust Prince of the Wolf fans, so good. I'm going to ask you all a favor. Netflix is hemming and hawing on my special. Something about white guy. So, if you guys want to see my special, that's already been shot. They don't got to pay to shoot it. If you want to see my special, hey, hop on Netflix. Just at them on Twitter. Say, hey, Wait, we, the criticism was because you're white? No, no, no. It's, 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 it's like, it's, ooh, you're, middle -aged you're white, Caucasian. Middle-aged white guy is a tough sell right now. It, That's it just the is. biggest demo. <laughs> it, it is the biggest demo. But, but, but right now... Okay, and they're an angry demo. They want representation. But right now, they have representation. They have Bill, they have Rogan, they have Segura, and they have Burt Kreischer. And, they, and they're not looking to add to that. I'm not saying... That, that white guys are to, not. I think you play to a different kind of white guy. I do definitely, but I'm, I'm not saying that white guys don't get the. I mean, don't don't woe is me. We've had a good run, white guys. I'm just saying, for for the first time in history, as it should be, people are saying we've had enough white guys. We've yeah. got our fill. We still have white guys, but we'd like to add some more. So I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, I if it was 20 it. years ago when I could just push white guy through, but I can't. Right. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Unfortunately, other people need opportunities. I'm all for it, by the way. I'm all. I'm all, No, yeah. before the show, you were very, very anti-minority. 
Mm -hmm. Very, you're like all these Latino. That's why we're making Johnson over there. Black and Jewish comics. I was like, no, you're Jewish. Jewish. And you were like, yeah, that, oh, yeah, I am. Well, go me, but everyone else. (laughs) You know how you get. I do. You know, just to really double down on my Judaism, I put a, I put a, it's Yamaka. It's Judaism. On my nutsack. Judaism. It's Judaism. Judaism. It's not Judaism. (laughs) I heard it in a movie. (laughs) But yeah. Da Vinci Code. Guys, this is not a woe is me. And I'm not saying the white guys don't get enough. We've had a great run. White guys. Yeah, we've had a great run. Give them a chance. They're still on TV. They're just now looking for other people to put on TV, which means it's not just white guys. That's all I'm saying. I'm just not as famous I've never as heard the other white guys. Say white guys this many I'm gonna times say it like 74 show. times. 74 That's the more name times. Of this episode. White guys. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the, the uh, at Netflix. White guys <laughs> represent us. Yeah, no, we're plenty represented. You go to the white Are guy sure? network. You actually go to CMT and <laughs> at them and tell them, hey. Buy John. <laughs> yeah, go to CMT or special sell in two seconds. That's not a terrible idea. Um, but yeah, guys, I'm having a great time on the weekends, on the road. I finally finished. Do you remember that story months ago I told? The real story about walking around the block and throwing up and having my cluster headache? Mm-hmm. So the way I do stories is I'll tell them exactly how they happened. I've told you this five or six times on stage. And then I put the story away for like eight months because I want to come back to it fresh and see if I have any new ideas. Because mm-hmm. I know if I just start and, and plow through it, I'm going to stay on the same track. I just know my brain. But eight months later, I'm a different person, I'm a different artist, I'm a different storyteller. And so how do I attack the story differently eight months later? That's how I always do it. So I'm back to that story now, and I'll be telling it on the road, but I wrote some great stuff for it this weekend. I'm really oh, good, excited, man. really excited, man, about good. it. Um, but, uh, all right, should we do, can I ask you the recipe question first? Yeah, before we get to, Okay. Recipe of the week. I wanted to make meatballs, turkey meatballs. So good. I get some ground, Beth likes this. You're healthy. Yeah, we ground the turkey. I, I get some ground turkey. I put some salt, oh, pepper. So you ground turkey. Yeah, you know, <laughs> with, a, with a monkey. So much yeast. Yeah. <laughs> I put salt, pepper, cayenne pepper. Okay. okay. Put it in there. Little honey. Put it in the meat. Okay. And uh, some of that cassava flour to hold it together. I pureed up some carrots. <laughs> put those in there. Mixed it all up. Uh, it's sitting in the refrigerator right now. I'm going to put them in balls and put them in the oven. Or should I add anything to the meat? She's very specific about what she's allergic to. So right now it's a lot, is it gonna bind together with that cassava flour a little bit of she it? She can't have bread? Can't uh, do breadcrumbs? Is the breadcrumbs better than the flour? Can she have an egg? Would the egg help bind it? Yeah, egg and breadcrumbs will give you some love. Yeah. Um, look, I haven't made them this way. Right. I'm not saying it's not gonna work. Threw a couple ingredients in there to. The honey? Took me off the meatball path. Yeah. So I don't know. It's going to be a, a ball of meat. <laughs> <laughs> but it, I don't know if it's going to fall within the parameters that I've come to understand <laughs> as a meatball. That's what I'm going to call the recipe. Josh's okay. ball of meat. So Josh's balls of meat. I mean, look, I think you should take some pictures of this yeah. and post it and just see what people think. You got it. What would you? How long would you cook those for? Whew, it's been a long time. Really? <laughs> Tell me why. Tell me what's the trepidation in your voice. Uh, I would cook them until they couldn't be eaten, and then I would make something, something else. Different. <laughs> But it's all right to have a weird <laughs> recipe of the week. This, it's just me. These might tell, be delicious. Tell me why you don't think they're going to taste good. All right, the honey and the and the turkey, I don't know if that's going to... I don't know if that's going to mix either. I don't know if that's going to vibe. I don't know if it's going to mix. Uh, I put a little bit in it. It's not overbearing and the, amount. And the carrot should have been your sweetness. Like, you should have just left it alone with that. Uh, I, I put carrot in for color. Bright, nice color. It's a pop of color in my Man, like, what kind of, what kind of meatballs were you trying to like? Have you ever seen an orange meatball? No, that's why I put one in. Okay, so then that's good though. <laughs> now I'm starting to understand it. Yeah. So this is like artistic. Just trying something out. And there are flavors that you dig, and you're seeing if they're gonna go together. I already bought a rotisserie chicken just in case this goes. See, you're bold. Okay, the honey is gonna throw you for a loop. 
I would have added some garlic powder in with your salt, pepper, cayenne. That would have been the only other dry. Just some garlic or onion. Hmm. Onions, you don't have to. Garlic makes it a little tricky. Yeah. Got to take that out. What would be a good, strong root that could get that garlic flavor? What's a cum What does cumin taste like? Uh, cumin is like, it's like, use it a ton man like it you t you taste it in some mexican food not all um you, you taste it in indian food a lot i think it's the three c's uh cardamom cumin and cumin mm -hmm. is it indian that, i think that's from ikea the cumin bimbim no, no i said it correctly don't okay, worry yeah. so i just use the punjabi dialect that most people aren't familiar with the mountain <laughs> region of india um but i don't know how this is gonna go so what i would do What's Punjabi? Um, high, high desert, no, okay. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, geography. It was the only class I was ever good at. <laughs> so I just wrap bullshit around one fact, it's and really, it sounds way better. It's really smart, because if you know one thing really well, if you can somehow work in a weird fact about that, people then they're like, like, smart. They're like, oh, that's, I heard that in school. Yeah, it's a Punjabi So the other mountain. shit must be yeah, true. Yeah. That's syllogism, buddy. The first two things are true, the last thing, it must be true. I, so um, okay, so here's what I would do. I would get a, not a crock pot, but like, uh, I don't think I would roast these. You don't like, think you would bake them? I don't think I would bake them because turkey's dry, man. And I don't know what that carrot's going to do in a baking type condition. So I would get a big ass pan mm -hmm. and I would heat it just below medium heat and I would brown them on each side, right? So I would brown, that would take probably about like five minutes on one side flip them mm -hmm. five minutes on another side. Then I would add, can your girl have a little like white wine or red mm -hmm, wine? Mm -hmm. I would add whichever one she likes more with turkey. I might go white. I know that sounds crazy, but my instinct says use a red wine mm -hmm. to deglaze the pan after you've browned the second side and then rub the meatballs in there to get the little bits off the bottom, flip them a second time and cook them in that, that wine will burn off, the alcohol will burn out and cook them for just a few more minutes. Probably a total of about, depending on how big they are, if they're like, this big, like a golf ball, I would mm -hmm. say 15 minutes. If they're bigger than that, I would say closer to 20 minutes. So you're gonna have four flips, five, 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 and five. Okay. Um, I know people say don't overflip your meat. We're talking about meatballs, and I'm trying to get moisture into them. And so people say don't overflip your meat. They say over, don't flip the meat. Don't overflip the meat. Yeah, that's a big, big, big thing. If you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. So that's how I would try to save. Your recipe of the week. You know what we're gonna but do? But I don't know if it's savable. It might be Leonardo DiCaprio on the Titanic, and you're we, like, why does he have to die? We're gonna let it ride, everybody. Let it ride, And here's dude. what I think I'm gonna do to save it. I am going to cook the meatballs the way I had planned. And then I'm gonna make another experimental sauce to drizzle over the meatballs. Oh, this is just gonna be. And then I'm gonna put them over rice. Now, last night, I made my own potato chips. I, I, I sweet potato chips. That that sounds a little sweet better. potato fried. You almost made me throw. Sweet potato potato chips. Sweet potato sweet potato sweet. Just say sweet potato potato chips. You can just say sweet potato chips. C no, because then it's sweet. not like you're using sweet as a like, dude. Sweet potato chips. But they could be like, what if there's a comma there? <laughs> okay, but it's just, <laughs> you don't have to say it like that. You know, that. a comma can really change everything. I hate you so much. <laughs> But uh, you know what I did? I spread a little avocado on the sweet potato potato chips. Sweet potato potato chips. And, All right. And then I ate those. It was delicious. Uh, but I'm gonna spread. You know what? I'm gonna bring you one of those meatballs. You're here. not. You are not. I'm, I'm bringing it to you. I'm bringing it under I'm, no circumstance. I'm gonna bring one for you. Just and, take and a photo, One each man. for your kids. No, nah, man. And I'm gonna I'm, tell them your, that your dad made this and left it at me. my house. I'm gonna take that meatball <laughs> and I'm gonna throw it so hard. It's not gonna break. You're gonna think Pedro Martinez <laughs> in his prime threw a 96 mile an hour inside fastball on you. You know what you're gonna be throwing? And a handful of delicious. Uh, yeah, and it's gonna hit you right in the side of the cheek. And I'm gonna Splat. lick my cheek. I'm yeah, gonna... you will. But no one in my family will. What if I take one of those bases? Under no circumstances am I eating an experiment that an untrained Untrained. Cook untrained. I cook every day. That does not mean you train. <laughs> that means you practice making things this way. Yes. And yes. you're really good at making things this way. That's like if a dude always falls down when he's How trying to. How are we going to, because I'm going to taste it and tell you it's delicious. 
How are we going no. to once and for all? Beth going is going to tell me if it tasted delicious. Okay. And she won't lie. And if it did, awesome. Still not eating a meatball with honey on it. <laughs> you don't like meat with honey? Uh, I'm not eating a meatball with honey on it. I put honey on pork chops. I'm not eating they a are delicious. meatball with honey on it. Look, Swedish meatballs are sweet. That's not my vibe. Yeah. I like mine in tomato sauce, old school. They could spell them S W E E T I S H. Swedish. Swedish. Swedish meatballs. Swedish <laughs> meatballs. You know, they're Swedish. They're Swedish, Swedish meatballs. Uh, okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to videotape. I balls. I'm going to videotape her eating them. Yeah. And so we can get Ooh, a Ooh, that's nice. So I can just get oh, a reaction. Please. Please. Uh, can oh, we put it on the K channel? A hundred percent. It's gonna be so delicious, everybody. <laughs> you wait till I get those Swedish meatballs. When you said I'm gonna experiment with a sauce and drizzle it on it, yeah. I legit got queasy. <laughs> I looked away and legit was like, Well listen, I'm gonna I'm gonna blend up a nice sweet sauce with some I'm gonna get some balsamic vinegar. And I'm gonna mix it with some white wine and throw some radishes in there. <laughs> and I'm gonna top it off with some scallions and a, and a couple of skittles. Throwing random words. And I'm gonna put it in a blender. Mix it with some radishes. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you said I know, it like, yeah, radishes like that was a like thing. Ice cube yeah. in the movies yeah. back in the day. <laughs> put some radishes in there. Like, yeah, dude. Um, See who doesn't eat it. Now, I, this I can't wait for. I'm gonna go home and bake it. She's gonna try it. It's gonna be delicious. And even if she doesn't. She'll tell me she likes it. You'll be able to tell her. Oh, she won't lie. Even if she's nice, she won't lie. Do you know what I might do to save the meatball? You I'm, already said you're going to make an experimental sauce. I might just put a cube of butter on top of each one of them. Oh, you're making it war. You can't cover shit in butter and then people go, ah, that shit's not bad. Uh, you, yes, you can. Butter well, and cheese. Let's try. But I'm going to butter and then cheese and then I'm going to dip it in a chocolate sauce. There you go. And that seems like that's going to be the best thing you've ever had. Let's talk about UFC. UFC. We wa I watched a fight from the hotel room in San Francisco. Josh, or not, I was going to say Josh Thompson, but it's not Josh Thompson. Wonderboy Thompson. Wonderboy Thompson, Thompson versus? Darren Tilt out of Liverpool, the now, hometown favorite in Liverpool. Yes, I will say, this guy, Till, I love, son of a bitch. love him on the mic. I love him on the mic. I just love his voice. Yeah, man, but I love he says whatever he wants, and he's full of wonder, and you can tell he loves what he does. He I, gets hit. And he keeps wanting to yes. fight. He doesn't back up and be like, oh, shit. I <laughs> love that. He's my new favorite fighter. Whoa, I wow. I love his approach in the ring. I love <clears throat> who he is in the ring. I love. But he was demonstrably bigger than this other guy. Well, he missed weight okay. by a lot. By so, almost a division. All right. So he was bigger. And this is the second time he's missed weight. And I'm pretty sure he missed weight at two different divisions. Right. So my thing is this. <laughs> The one thing Thompson does is that when he moves forward, sometimes he can move people backwards. Mm -hmm. He was running into a bigger man who he couldn't move backwards. Yes. And uh, and throwing punches that a smaller man, I'm not sure, shakes off quite as easily as this big motherfucker did. Wonder Boy can knock just about anyone out. Um, I, I thought. I, here's I, the I thing. Didn't like, I didn't like. Darren Till won the fight. Okay. Yes, but did he? He didn't land as many punches. Well, here's the thing. If you're a fighter or a fan of the fighter, you're looking at damage, you're looking at punch stats maybe between rings, but it's more of an instinct feel. The the competitor in me sees that fight and goes and sees the stats and goes, Wonder Boy wins the fight four rounds to one. And it should be pretty unarguable. But I will say this. It's a five round fight. Mm -hmm. Everybody gave Till the round where he knocked Thompson down. In. 100%. But there are two rounds. The second, and I don't remember if the other one was the third or the fourth, where in the last 30 seconds, Wonder Boy, in one of the rounds, threw one punch, mm -hmm. and in another one, didn't throw a combination, but threw a single strike three times. And in that time span, Darren Till attacked heavily, mm -hmm. even though a lot of these strikes were missing, and I acknowledge, like, he missed with a lot of strikes that the crowd oohed and odd on, but he stole two rounds in that fight, and I feel like most people would objectively agree with that, like, hey, it ain't right, but he stole two rounds, and in your hometown, 
Go go to jail for theft. No, forty nine forty six is what two. That's people bullshit. Have. That's, crazy. That's a crazy score. But if it would have been three two, Darren Maybe. Till, I can live with that decision because I did feel he stole the second round, especially with those front attack leg kicks that made Thompson change, change stances. Stance. In that, the bruising then, he had on And the last thirty seconds, well, the front kicks were to the other leg, to yeah. the left leg. The bruising was behind the right leg, but uh, but the last thirty seconds of that round, he definitely won. And that's always gonna. Not always, but 99% of the time, it's always going to be enough to steal a close round. That said, you heard Thompson in between the fourth and the fifth. Did he hurt you with anything? Nothing. Yeah, I know. So he wasn't hurt. I'm pretty sure he he hurt till at least Couple twice. Times, yep. Even when uh, Thompson got knocked down, he wasn't hurt. He just got caught. Um, so, but that, all that said, for, forget all that. It doesn't matter who won. It doesn't matter who lost because it's not going to affect either guy's career in a negative way. Like. Everybody in the UFC thinks Thompson won that fight. Right. They know he's money. He's got the look. He's humble. Oh, I mean, crazy humble. Even though he's cocky in crazy the ring. Crazy humble, he's dude. He's humble. And he's highly, highly skilled. I loved watching this fight. Me too. I get a lot of people were like, yo, man, they were like waiting on each other. I grew up on the taekwondo circuit. Like, I grew up on the karate circuit, the kempo circuit. It came off like an old school karate tournament with no pads. It looked almost like a sparring match, though, dude. Some people complain about that. I did not that. like how much they touched hands. That's crap I don't mind. I, I like to see fighters either talk shit or show respect. But, when it's in the middle, I'm like, whatever. But I like the respect. I don't need it throughout this, the fight. Here's, here's what I think that was. Till missed weight, and even though it wasn't the first time, Thompson really seemed okay with it and excused it and even gave him uh, another weight he could make. I think he said, if you weigh you know, at least like 188, as long as you don't go over 188, I'll fight you. Mm -hmm. And he didn't have to do that. And Till's like, oh, okay, thank you. But reportedly, uh, Till's girlfriend or wife, I don't know which one it is, but baby mama, pregnant, um, she had to go to the hospital. Yeah. And that's no joke. And as somebody who has kids, you have kids, um, you overreact, you freak out. It's huge, crazy stress. And as a man, there's literally nothing you can do. Mm -hmm. And it is the most helpless that I or anyone I know who has gone through from a minor scare, meaning, oh, they just her home with indigestion to a major scare which was all the way miscarriage right yeah i have a friend friends who went through that um the fear for the for the husband and that's the only fear i can speak on or for the father is horrible because if you're a big tough guy or even on the inside a big tough guy you are handcuffed emotionally physically figuratively literally like yeah, there's man. nothing you can do um and i would find it very hard to make weight I think Thompson knew that homeboy was struggling, and I think he was just trying to let him know, like, let's just fight, man. Like, you went through a lot of shit. It's good. Let's just fight. I'm here to fight. Yeah. That's my job. I like buying fast cars. I just want to fight. And, and so for that, I didn't mind it. Normally, I would almost agree with you. Yeah. But this time, I'm like, yo, I kind of like that they shook hands that much because it was one guy telling the other guy, you went through a lot of shit. I'm glad you're still here. And the other guy going... You didn't have to let me be here, and I appreciate that. And I felt that a lot throughout the fight. If you didn't like that yeah. and you felt the same thing, I respect that, but it didn't bother me. I, I, here's the thing. like For me, I, don't, I think there's no doubt that Till, and this is an untrained eye, everybody. This is just honestly a person watching. I don't know much about. Well, you I, called this fight. I think you bet this fight, right? It seems to me that the judges, a lot of they judged on. There was no urgency coming from Thompson. He didn't, he didn't, there, there was no urgency. Very good point. And so I agree with you. Those last 15, 20 seconds of every round, if it's a close fight, I think you need to get in there because and that's the last and thing. And if it's the hometown, hometown guy and 100%. you're hearing those reactions to you gotta shots get in there. that are blocked or avoided, yep. then you gotta get in there. And Thompson's enough of a veteran to know that, and it's why I, he didn't complain at the decision, even though after the fight he goes, look, I thought I won four but rounds. But dude, how, in the last 20 seconds of the but fight, how that. are they not – throwing punches at each other. A lot of times you're looking for different things and you're yeah. not thinking about clock because you're not tired. Usually the only time people think about clock is when they're starting to get gassed. Thompson was not tired. Nah, man, that dude's a pro. The other thing. And he's fine. He's not yeah. gonna he's not gonna even go down in the rankings, I don't think. I think he'll stay number one. I really do. It was pretty it was it was a pretty amazing fight, but like I said, I I can't wait to see what this Till kid does. He walked through a we'll lot of punches. See. I'll tell you this. He's a big boy, man. If they give him someone who can Stand up and has yeah. a good chin, but has a ground game. It well, might be a different right. So Thompson only took to the ground once or twice. Well, Thompson has no jujitsu, right. no wrestling. He is a does this guy still have any fighter. any? He's, I mean, he says he trains it, but I've never heard someone say they don't. That left hand, <laughs> that look left hand though, dude, looked yeah. 
like a rocket yeah. coming out. No, look, he was big. He showcased a little bit of the kicks. His high kicks are slow, yeah. but his low kicks were powerful and quick. Um, the front leg kick strike was clean, um, even though I hate that strike. I think it's 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 a career ender. Oh, the away. one that's straight up to the face like that? No, no, no. The one to the front of the leg. Oh, the front dude, of the that I, looked I think we're rough. one fighter's career getting ended. He kept from straightening that. out his leg like that. That looked fucked up. Yeah, once somebody's leg breaks, I think that move would be. So that good. straight. Late kick, That's straight, front kick straight up to the face like that? Yo, know, that would wreck your life. If You'll that see that in 60, 70% of the UFC. Does that ever connect? Oh, yeah, there's been huge knockouts. Vitor oh. Belfort has been knocked out twice by that. You would crush someone's fighters. face with that. Oh, yeah. Oh, What's yeah. the worst, the hardest you've ever been hit as an adult? As, uh, as an adult person. Yeah, okay. Um, like almost maybe a year ago. I oh, was uh, I was boxing down at the boxing gym and Victor Ortiz showed up. Vicious Victor Ortiz, yeah. former uh, not welterweight, uh, junior welterweight. He also fought Floyd Mayweather. Um, and he came into the gym. He knew some people there, and we started talking and having a good time. And he goes, "Hey man, he was big. He was weighing like 175. Mm. He's getting ready to start training again." He goes, "Hey man, he's like, you look good in there. You want to go a couple rounds?" And I was like, "Sure." And but I've told you this before. Yeah. I hit butt right. I said butt. I'm 40. Yeah, so this is two years ago. Yeah, yeah, I said, yeah. I'm 40. So you can't go all, yeah. hey, this is my <laughs> sparring partner. I'm getting ready to fight Brandon Rios. And here we go. And he goes, no, dude, I got you. I got you. I'm like, all right. Yeah. Now, I've heard this before from mm -hmm. other guys. Like, I grew up around pro fighters, so I still hang out with mm -hmm. pro fighters. And I've been beat up by a lot of pro fighters. You know, I'm friends with Ferguson, yeah, Tony Ferguson. Yeah. The legit. James Tony. Like, well. He, I was a little boy. He didn't oh. do nothing to me. He said I was cool because I thought it was going to be Roy Jones Jr. Even though he got straight tats. <laughs> <laughs> I was wrong. <laughs> um, apparently Roy Jones Jr. was the best fighter in the world. I've never seen anyone win a fight by punching an opponent's arm a hundred times in the first round. <laughs> he, he rendered, he basically was like, I'm not going to let you use that Roy arm. Roy Jones Jr. was just... Did you, you know the fight stupid. I'm talking about? Yeah, he's just stupid. It doesn't count. Like, none of his fights count. He's not from Earth. He's, like, he's from a different planet, Krypton. <laughs> and he fucking came here in a little pod and ended up in, like, Indiana. And farmers raised him. And oh. then he became Roy Jones Jr. But anyway. So we get in the ring. And Wayne McCullough, former multi-time champion, Olympic silver medalist for Ireland. He trains my son in boxing. Mm -hmm. Um, and he trains me too, that's who I was there with. He goes, you know he's gonna fucking kill you? I go, yeah. He goes, just make sure you cover your liver. I said, yeah, you got it, man. He's like, all right. So my right elbow's down. And I've sparred Victor since then, yeah. so I, I got love for the guy. So my elbow's tucked in, protecting my liver, right hand's protecting the chin. I got my, my jab ready, my, even on what, the southpaw. Are you, even though you know you're not fighting and he said he's not going to hit you, are you a little nervous at least no, right now? I've been hit a lot. I've been. Okay, I've what are you feeling walking in? You're just feeling, oh, let's see what happens? I'm excited. It's okay. like if you're going to go skydiving or if you're going to go skateboarding or whatever it is that's fun for you, like I love to fight. Mm -hmm. So as long as it's a controlled environment, I hate violence. I never want to see it in the street because if somebody's going to the hospital, right? Right. Because that's when you don't stop. You're trained. You don't stop. Right. They're, they're not able to do anything. Right. But in boxing, like we have headgear, mouthpiece, hands. We're not trying to kill each other, right, Victor? Um, you should have heard the shit he said about you off, uh, off shut camera. Shut your mouth, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so they ring the bell. You know who likes my Swedish meatballs? Fucking Victor Ortiz. Say eat. some shit about it now. He ain't gonna eat that. That's no. not what he trains with, man. That's how he gets a recipe from his training. Well, no, he needs to change it up. He'll get more wins on my diet. <laughs> <laughs> so they ring the bell and we start. And I'm a southpaw. But I utilize my my left hand speed and strength as a jab. So I can throw it real, real quick and keep you off balance, or I can throw it real stiff like a Larry Holmes jab and actually do some damage and make you back up. So that's my best defensive and offensive weapon. So against Victor, I'm gonna move a lot of side to side, never straight backwards or you get lit, and I'm gonna use my jab a lot. So round start, boom, side to side, bam, jab, pa, 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 jab. What, you like that triple jab, Victor? Pa, pa, pa. He's like, yeah, I like that. Boosh, boosh. I get two shots right away. Jab to the forehead, body shot here. Block, but still feel it. Okay. Awesome. That, that's blind. Question, right question. When you, when you go block to the forehead, that was the first punch? I took a shot to the forehead. Okay, you took it because you didn't move your hand up to block it, but your hand stayed down. After I land the triple jab, yeah. I go to throw it again. I don't get it back quick enough. It's another triple. So, bam, jab here to my head. 
Body shot, bang, right here. But I blocked the body shot. So I've never been hit in the stomach when I wasn't expecting. Well, I'll get to it. I'll okay, get to okay. it. Okay, okay. So that's like sort of the first contact. So we're moving around and he's just pressuring me, right? Like slips right under my jab. Like this is the last time I even land more than one jab. And I throw doubles and triples on guys. But everything is almost like Mike Tyson, right? Because he's small, left-handed guy, southpaw. Boom, 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 moving in, moving in. And now he's in my chest. Now he's making me uncomfortable, right? Like I can't use jujitsu or judo. I can't throw him on the ground. Right, right, I right. have to be able to use boxing, defense, and technique. And so now I'm in trouble. So he's got me up on the ropes, bang, 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 body shots, a couple of them land. They take the will to fight and they take a lot of stamina out of you at the same time. I bring my hands down. He takes to the body, bang, 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 three shot combo to the head, right? I get my hands up, but I still take some damage because mm -hmm. my hands are only here and he's catching me up top, right? I'm protecting my jaw. So I move again, I move again, I get off the ropes. Oh, by the way, the whole time Wayne's going, get off the fucking ropes. <laughs> Sorry, Wayne. <laughs> it's fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> so I get, off, I get off the ropes. I circle away from his uh, right hook, which is just a killer. And I've felt it since then. He almost separated my jaw with it a couple months afterwards. Like, Why are you still sparring with this man? I, I told you, I love fighting the same yeah. way you love cracking jokes, right, man, and right, playing right, baseball. Right. Like, I don't want to go play baseball. That sucks to me. <laughs> You've seen me try to hit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm in there. There's about a minute left. And I'm already starting to feel it because the pressure fatigues you, right? And even though I'm in decent shape and I can go a few rounds, the pressure's making me tired. Mm -hmm. I told you at the beginning of this, you always move side to side or so you never move straight back or that's your ass. When you get tired, fatigued, you get flustered, sometimes technique goes, right? And the first thing you learn is the last thing you forget. Well, moving side to side wasn't the first thing I learned. So I get fatigued, he catches me with a jab, I move back, boom, straight left hand. Because I move backward instead of left or right. Why can't you move back? You're moving out of range. Why is that not okay? Because he's going to keep moving forward. Uh, and he right, can right, cover right. more distance moving forward than you, me, or Usain Bolt can moving backwards. Mm -hmm. And that's how people in the UFC get knocked out. The, the UFC's biggest problem, besides fighters not making weight, I should probably say, is a jab and lateral movement. And once you see those things in commonplace, the UFC could even surpass boxing. But it's at such an amateur level as far as the use and knowledge of a jab. Mm -hmm. That's not the fighter's fault, it's the trainer's fault from being not exposed to boxing and not believing in what boxing brings to the table. But this straight back movement instead of side to side gets so many male and female fighters knocked out. A lot of Muay Thai doesn't train lateral movement, although a lot of fighters who came up, American fighters, through Muay Thai, their natural sort of preconditioning of watching guys like Sugar Ray Leonard mm -hmm. for so long, they kind of implemented that. Uh, my homegirl Angie Hill's one of those who has lateral movement, even though she's a Muay Thai fighter, for sure Muay Thai fighter. Right. Um, so, but I move straight back, eat a huge left hand right in the nose and mouth, nose starts bleeding, I can taste it right away, I'm back up on the ropes, he presses in again, I clinch him, I go, dog, take it easy. He goes, nah, man, you're doing great. <laughs> And I'm sitting there like hanging on him, bleeding on his shoulder, right? I go, brother, take it easy. 10 seconds left. Uh, he lightens up on me, just peppers up the body, but yeah. nothing that's gonna, nothing that's gonna hurt me. And then the bell rings and that's it. And then after a minute rest, Wayne's like, all right, let's go again. I'm like, uh, I'm sorry. Eat dick. <laughs> We're not Yo, going again. Kick rocks. Yeah. I'm out. That's Look at, you see all this? All this blood? Yeah, not so, good yeah, for me. Man. So that That's was the hardest you to hit. Recently, and then the, the shot I took from him to the jaw was rough. Like, I couldn't bite down for a week. I told you. I could hardly talk. I, I had to do ESPN radio the next morning, and you know, dude, I laugh at my own mm -hmm. jokes. Mm -hmm. Me too. Not that day. <laughs> Only once. You should just had a sign that said, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> like Wiley Coyote. <laughs> um, you know the hardest I've ever, I've been hit as a grown-up. I told you the story about the last fight I was in. Yeah. The hardest I've been hit as a grown-up guy, you know, I deserved every single fist that I ate. You probably deserved every time you've ever got hit, except nah, by your brothers. Listen, you, you define deserve. I deserve this one because I started the shit talk. Perfect. I started the confrontation. Listen to this, people on Twitter. And you he, start it. And he just ended it. And guys like me end it. And, and by the way, <laughs> I knew him. And yeah. he came up to apologize to me two weeks later, and I said, "What are you apologizing for?" You're still like your dad. No, I, I told. I was like, "You remember when your dad said yeah. 
Hey, man, I asked you a question. If I don't like your answer, that's on me, yeah. not you. Look that's how you are. Look at that. This dude, you know, I was working at this place and at a bar downtown, and the guy, and I was partial owner of this place, and the other partial owner also knew this guy. He used to manage the bar. He used to, and he brought him in because the guy, and the guy had his hat in his hands, and he was all, you know, upset. And he was like, man, I really like you a lot, and I lost my temper, <coughs> and I'm really sorry. And I was like, hey, James. I His name's James? Yeah. I'm named for James. Yeah, Freddie I, James. So is my son, Rocky James. Because my Uncle Jimmy was the toughest son of a bitch well, ever. this dude uh, had done a little time. James's are no joke. James had done a little time. <laughs> and I had seen him handle his business at the club before. And I, mean, I was under... You were just uh, feeling rowdy and probably a little faded, yeah? I was drunk Man. and I was cocky at the time. In I, Boston. I, well, at the time, <laughs> I considered myself to be the mayor of Pioneer Square in Seattle. There you go. Oh, oh it was Seattle. Yeah, I was having a good time up there, guys. There was no rules. It was lawlessness. And I owned part of a place down there. And I used to go on the road and come back. And we get fucked up in the club. And we do after hour <laughs> parties. It was a lot of fun. I love when you just throw that in the middle. Of so, but... But he, James wasn't having it. Yo, James. You crossed the line. Yeah, he, he punched me like two... Maybe three times, and then I know I fell on the ground because I was, had a lot of boot marks on my wrist. Uh, and and I will tell you something. Oh, he beat the fuck out of me. But he came down, and he was like, I'm really sorry, He man. knew he went too far. He was like, I think I've kicked you. That's what I think. Once he a guy's down, <laughs> unless you're doing jujitsu stuff, it's over. Because we were, we were actual friends. Yeah. And it, the, the, I just started running If you guys saw each other today. It'd be fine. Oh, that's good. I don't hold. Look, that's not a Dude, grudge that's for a me. Weird, if that's more a guy thing. Like, I, I know wrong, guys dude. that I have been, wrong. like, I've been in fights with dudes where it was physical. Yeah. And I'm not, like, I'm not trying to just jump on your story. Like, I would lie in court for a handful of those guys. Yeah. Because I, I know how far they would go for me because I've been in there with them. <laughs> and, and listen, you know what? I respected James for coming down. He felt bad as a friend. Yeah. He felt bad as a friend. And, but I have to tell him, you... Not everyone can stop though, so I right. think the kicking is probably what made I think him feel right. bad. I think, if I, I did I that, so. I would feel real, real kicky. He was just mad, man. He was in a bad spot, yeah. and, and I just caught him on a bad night and wouldn't stop running my <laughs> mouth. Well, you ended up pretty. You're all good, man. Yeah, man. You're look, with Team Handsome, baby. I even told him, I go, look, you didn't break the nose, so you know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, like, brother, I've been on TV. Yeah, I, after an ass whooping, we're good. I like the kick <laughs> to the ribs more than the punch to the face. You know what? This is where Papa makes his money. You know what I mean? All right. Speaking of punching in the face and making money, before we're out of time, I want to hit WWE Monday Night Raw. Okay, because then we're gonna do a Mount Rushmore yeah. of our best war, war movies. movies. Are you ready? For which one? Monday Night Raw. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna focus on the Ronda Rousey storyline because. I'm not loving the what I see are opportunities that I feel are being missed. Um, I told you I was going to go a little harder on WWE um, as these progressed and as opportunities presented themselves. And this is one where I don't want to see them mess up with Rousey. And I'm worried that they're missing too many things that can help get her over. Mm -hmm. So last night's match, Nia Jax, who you would frigging love. She's gigantic. She is gorgeous. She's strong. She's way like anti-bully. Um, her size and weight was a part of her storyline. Um, she talked about being different and embracing it. Like she's super fucking cool. She's the champ right now. People are really starting to stick onto her. Like she's starting to get over is mm -hmm. the term. And they're already putting Ronda Rousey in a championship match against Nia. Um, I already think this is a mistake. Uh, if you if she loses to Nia, what the hell did you sign Ronda for? Mm -hmm. And you've basically killed her character. And if Nia loses, then what the hell was all the hubbub for? Like, why did you build her up just to hand Ronda to her that quickly? Like after one pay per view? Can they do they build like ahead of time? They work when backwards. You're, when you're doing storylines, do you ever go, hey, this is gonna be a trilogy, so let's just see what happens? First. Yes, you work from WrestleMania backwards. Okay. So it's why I worry that they're going to give Ronda the championship. I hope they don't, and maybe they have a way to have Nia win, or maybe it's like a no decision at the end, something like that. So anyways, Nia goes in, and they do this bit that I actually wrote for the big show 10 years ago 
when Big Show was going to demonstrate to his opponent just how deadly he is in the ring. Mm -hmm. So he brought in three different opponents. I wrote this whole thing, and he demonstrates three different types of matches. A submission match, and it's just some skinny 170-pound jobber, and Big Show rah, fucking chokes him out. Pff, submission. Knockout match. Another 160-pound dork from, like, whatever podunk town we were in. Fucking boom! And he's not even, like, nice about right. it. He goes, he's knocked out. He brings out the third guy, another fucking... What do you mean not nice about it? Like, like actually kind of... making himself look even tougher, yeah. right? And before, even he goes, hey, don't worry. When I put you through the table, I'm going to put you right through the sweet spot. I'm going to take really good care of you. You won't feel a thing. He's never going to see these guys again. That's just to make him right. not scared. Third guy, tables match. If you get broken through a table, it's over. Picks this guy up. Fucking boom! <laughs> Doesn't do it. Sweet smashes, but he looks amazing. Where's the sweet spot of the table? Middle? There is no sweet In middle, yeah. <laughs> there is no sweet He was just saying that to make the guy feel comfortable. Because when you were saying that, I'm like, is there a soft spot Sure, on the table? if you hit the side, that would kill you. The middle's going right to break. Right because of the legs. But he's slamming this poor bastard, like, super hard because he wants to look intimidating. I think mm -hmm. it was against Edge. So they do this number with Naya and with Ronda. They bring Naya out. Her opponent comes out, who's a jobber meaning the person is just there, the local wrestler who's going to take the beat down from the champion or whoever the badass is. And and Naya's whole promo, she's talking like during this fake match, is, oh, I'm supposed to be worried about the arm bar? That's what I'm supposed to be worried about? Meanwhile, Ronda has been brought out, and she's on commentary with Corey Graves, uh, Michael Cole, and uh, whoever else was there. I think Byron Saxton. And she's there just to get a little bit of verbiage in and get a little experience. She's still green on the mic, but she did okay. Mm -hmm. um, so Naya's out there, and she hands the girl the arm lock. She goes, here you go, honey. Put me in the arm lock. She lets the girl take her all the way to the mat. And then she picks her up with one arm, holds her high in the air, and is looking at Ronda Rousey and fucking power slams her right on her back, but doesn't pin her. Okay? Just keeps kicking her ass and keeps talking to Ronda while she's doing it, grabbing the mic. What am I supposed to, I'm supposed to be afraid of you? And she's doing a great job on the mic, right? She goes, they bring out some referees to help the girl. She goes, no, 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 get the hell out of here. You come help her, Rhonda. You come help her. Now this is a great moment, okay? This is a great moment for any wrestler to get over and Nia executes it really well. She's pointing right at her, the girl's unconscious in the ring. You come get her. So Rhonda's like, what, are you serious? Like, you want me? All right, F it. She gets up, she doesn't say F it, you, this just for emphasis. She gets up, she starts walking down. She looks great, right? She's looking the part. She gets in the ring. While she's walking, the officials pulled the other girl out of the ring so that Rhonda and Naya could have a moment. Rhonda comes in the ring, they have a stare down. Naya goes, oh, this is Rhonda Rousey. This is the look that's supposed to intimidate me. Well, guess what? I find it funny. And she laughs, but the laugh didn't work because she had to force it. Mm -hmm. And then she just walks out of the ring and leaves Rhonda there, you know, the line from The Godfather holding her dick in her hand, mm -hmm. right? And there's nothing for her to do. This was a mistake. Everything was great until they pulled the victim out of the ring. Mm -hmm. They need to make Rhonda not a stone cold copy like St Stone Cold Steve Austin, but she has to make badass decisions. When she's gonna go in there to help that girl, don't take the fallen jobber out of the frigging ring. You let Rhonda go in there, sees this unconscious girl, she goes to pick her up to help her, and then she fucking slams her too. Just as hard. That's awesome. Into the middle of the ring, looks at Nia Jax and goes, what? And walks out. And then all of a sudden people are like, yo. These chicks are going to throw down. She That's a great move. So dude. those are the kind of opportunities that if I was writing the storyline, I would throw in there. You may think that sucks, but just That's on awesome. my experience That's good theory, there, dude. and how I would position these women against one another, mm -hmm. even though I think it's too soon to have them in a, in a, in a match together. But that's kind of the move that I would want to make with her. I would want to put her more down that Stone Cold Steve Austin path. Right now, it's like the feel-good Ronda Rousey. And that feel good feeling, it dries up. By the way, quick. Can I also say this? And it gets corny quick. Yeah, I, I will say this. I hope she ends up being whoever's most natural. I find her to be so, even when she did interviews with UFC, I find interviews with her to be so tough to watch. I find her to when be. When she tries to be professional mm -hmm. and camera ready, I can't stand it. When I, she would I, talk shit, though. When she was cocky and everyone hated her, that's the Rhonda they need. Except, 
I, in wrestling. Yes, I found it all to be completely disingenuous. Whenever I see an interview with her, and this is not a knock, this is something that everybody in the world goes through, she just happens to be going through it in front of the camera. Yeah. I look at a person and I go, she has no idea who she is. She, oh, I, 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 100%. We're watching a person who doesn't, who, who, who is putting on a, sell, a, a false bravado or all these interviews or saying things that she thinks she's supposed to say or saying the inspirational things that she thinks she's supposed to say, John which Jones, are great. Same way. I, John Jones yeah, for me was the exact same way. I just way. hate watching interviews with her. And so I would love the WWE to somehow bring out whatever she does naturally. They're not great at that. So that probably won't happen. What Why do you feel that is? Why do you feel they're not great at that? Most companies, WWE not excluded, you go with what you know. Right. So they're only going to go with gimmicks they've seen work before. And, hey, this is me, mm -hmm. is basically Bailey, another female wrestler. And that ship sailed, man. Like, the fans loved her because she was the fans. Yeah. And now she's not really in the picture. I'll tell you who I love. Like, when I watch that woman, Rose. Namajunas. Okay. That is somebody who is so clear on who she is. Okay, but I love, remember. But I love watching her because yes, she's so clear on who she is. But it's the reason why. Like, she knows who she is based on the shit she's gone through. Right. And you can see it based on how she deals with her man, Pat Barry, another yep. awesome MMA fighter, uh, really awesome kickboxer. But you've seen Ronda when the people, the circle she's around has been criticized. She doubles down. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know who she is. She relies on others to def help her define herself. And a lot of that probably has to do with losing a father. Agreed. I'm speaking because that's what I went through mm -hmm. as a young man. I didn't know who I was. I allowed other people to define me. It took me a long time to be comfortable with the guy I am today. So I can see that with her. Rose is like, yo, you like me or you don't. It took me a long time to yeah. get there. I was probably 30 before I figured that out. She's, she's, Rose to me is so, any video she puts up, anything, because she's so comfortable with who she is, she I can, who. I can watch, I can watch videos of people who are, who wear themselves like a sock with that kind of comfort. Yeah. Even if I don't agree with what they say. But that's what's awesome about people like that. They don't care if you agree or not. But and I don't mean part. I don't care in a bad way. They're like, oh, right on. Yeah. This is how I feel. That's cool. That's how you it's, feel. It, look, I'm not a huge Kobe Bryant fan, but I can watch him talk about almost anything because I know I'm going to get 100% Kobe. Now. Now. Now, yeah. now, 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 now. <laughs> but I know I'm going to get 100% Kobe. But I think there's another one who didn't figure out who he was. Yeah, was no, but it takes a little while. Shaq. Dude, uh, by the way, me too. And one of the reasons that I find people like that so fascinating is because I am new to it. And I'm still finding my way through that, but I'm really new to it. So it, it's so inspirational for me to see people so comfortable in their own skin. Yeah. Because it's ultimately, nice when you recognize it. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, you know, everybody. They have a guy, a wrestler named Elias. Yeah. And he does music. And the gimmick didn't work in NXT, but Hunter saw it, Triple mm -hmm. H saw it, and brought him to Raw. And this is a guy who's owning it and so comfortable in the skin. And he's literally coming out. I'm telling you, last night he had over 10 minutes in the ring with nothing but a spotlight, a chair, and a guitar. Dude, I'm telling you. He never even wrestled, Josh. And, and the but, crowd was connected the whole this time. Is why they this, went to a commercial break and came back. This is he why. Because he was comfortable with who he is. I'm telling you, if you're listening to me, this, or you're watching this, I truly believe, and this is going to sound like some hippy dippy shit, and obviously having a little modicum of success and a little money to be comfortable is super important. But I find that those people who are so clear with who they are to be so comfortable with their life and happy and content yeah. and at peace with who they are because you know so much of that struggle and so when if you're always looking for money you're always looking for something else to me that's filling in for the area that you don't know what you're looking because you still but don't know I, who you I are like money though. right i like money too we all like money <laughs> but sometimes when people if you think money's going to fix it for you then you don't know who you are yet yet that yet, and then you can find out who you are, and you can still like money, everybody. But like, there's Vince something. Vince McMahon knows who he is. Yeah, man, but there's something really about money. you finding out who you are that brings a certain amount of happiness and con and guys, you're not talking about. You, listen to me, and I'm not talking about a dude who's sitting on a pile of money. So don't don't make it seem like well, it's easy for you to say you got to know. It's a little bit of a pile. Yeah, no, it's like a there's like a, a like a 
in like a tiny stack next I'm to I'm not me. even sitting in the chair, baby. Yeah, I know. You're hovering. <laughs> sitting, on, <laughs> sitting on Ben Franklin's baby. Um, But yeah, man, I, that's why I really, I hope, because I am super curious. When, when the false bravado is gone, I'm super curious to find out eventually who she is. I don't think that's going to happen for a very long time. I agree. Um, She's not going to be allowed to do that. And that's okay, by the yep. way. Like, if you force it on someone, that breaks somebody. It's the kind of thing that has to come out naturally. Some people never figure it out. Mm -hmm. And they're just a searcher, right? And we all have friends and we all have family members. We're like, man, I hope they figure out what they want out of life one yep. day because I love them so much. So we all know people like that. And I don't think she's there yet, but just thinking of it as a businessman, the way to get her over is to go down that stone cold route where it's like, oh, you idea. thought I was going to show mercy? No, nah, I'm worse than you. That was a great idea. And, okay. um, Mount Rushmore. We should get to Mount Rushmore. Let me just say real quick, a little bit of business up front. Guys, Control Chaos, every Tuesday night, 7 p.m. Pacific time on my Facebook fan page. Last week was a shit ton of fun. Ross Matthews, Fortune Themester, my buddy, an actor named Josh Hopkins. Super great show. Tonight, another fantastic show. Theo Vaughn. Listen, if you don't know who Theo Vaughn is, he's about to be one of the biggest comics in the world. Fuck. Dude is <laughs> next level funny. Theo Vaughn, Sarah Tiana, a woman named Chelsea Lynn who goes by Tammy online. Um, upcoming episodes, uh, I've got Freddie Prince Jr. Haley Reinhardt is coming on to sing her new single, just her and her guitarist, here in this fucking studio. Next Tuesday? Your Tuesday. My this Tuesday, June right? June 12th. And uh, a guy named Brad Wallach will also be on that show. The ladies come over here when I do the show. Uh, and, 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 so, and also, <laughs> Houston, June 6th. Remember, I'm getting paid at the door. Half of my money, so the half of the door, goes to Recovery Houston. That's it, badass. Okay, so it's one night only, Wednesday night, June 6th. Come to that show. It's for a good cause. And then I wake up early next morning and I go to Austin, June 7th, 8th, and 9th. Um, all right, Mount. Rushmore of war movies. This was a suggestion from Twitter yep. from one of our favorite followers named Fun. Fun. Yep, and he's the at Flada to me, baby. Yes, so mm -hmm. please follow him there, and we thank you. And uh, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Sometimes. Yeah, no, I think you got the seven ends. Yeah, that was right. It, last time you did six ends, but I could tell. I, I try to. Show yeah, you gave the Henan. Okay. Um. So best war movies. Now this is kind of an easier one for me because I grew up watching war uh -huh. movies with my grandpa. He was in World War II. Uh, that told, doesn't count. I've told the story. Uh, you'll have to tune into another podcast to hear it again. Um, but uh, so do you want to start or do you want me to start and you have more time? Well, you know, this is this is going to be one for me where I know I'm going to miss some. We, we always do. Yeah. And I'm going to have reasons why I don't pick certain ones that might freak people out, but I'm still going to do Well, it. I know my number one right up top. Saving Private Ryan. Oh, nice. I. That uh, one was a heartbreaker, man. It has yeah. some moments in it where you're like, oh my God. But that was the first, that beach scene. Yeah. I brutal. had never seen a scene like that before. And it was so realistic and so, oh my fuck. Yeah. So I, I'm going Saving Private Ryan for the first one. I love that. That may or may not be on my list, mm -hmm. but I'm going to start mine with my very favorite war movie ever made. Mm -hmm. Um. It has Mark Hamill in it, believe it or not. Star Wars is not in it. it. No. It has Robert Carradine from Revenge of the Nerds in it. What? It has... Keep going. Lee Marvin from Our Man Flint. Lee Marvin, great. We should, by the way, the next Mount Rushmore is... Lee Marvin, how great he was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Western. And it was directed by Sam Peckinpah, and it's The Big Red One. That was my nickname in high school. Bro, that's a <laughs> This movie. I don't even know. What year is that? 1972, maybe? 73? Mm -hmm. I mean, it might even be pre-Luke Skywalker from Mark Hamill. This movie follows a unit in World War this II. This is your favorite one? I'm telling you. Any, there are going to be some people on Twitter, you'll see, that tag us both and be like, dude, Big Red One is my shit. Like, they were, I'm telling you, dude. When you watch it, you want it's it totally holds up. It's about a single unit, uh -huh. a tight unit of soldiers, and even when they get new recruits in, they're always like, "You'll be fucking dead in a week." And they really only look out for each other. It's like a group of like eight dudes. Uh -huh. Lee Marvin's their main guy. He's their boss, and Robert Carradine is like a writer. And it, this is the lead of Revenge of the Nerds, playing a tough guy, soldier, cynical, 
guy who's like, yeah, you'll be dead next week. I'm gonna write about it. Like, and the movie's told from his point of view, yeah. and it's their time in the war and what they go through. And Mark Hamill has a scene with no dialogue, where he is shooting the fuck out of a dead Nazi until the clip is empty, and the rage and craziness in his eyes because they were just in a concentration camp. He saw the ovens. And mm. he just was like, nah, man, there's not enough bullets. But he doesn't say anything. And it's amazing. So you'll watch it now, I think. And I hope a lot of you do. Because this movie is cash money. That's my number one. All right. I'm torn with a couple. I'm torn with well, one. Well, you got three more. Dude. Yeah, I'm torn with one because it was one of my favorite books. And I remember reading it. And as I was reading it, and I think I read it in a day and a half, I couldn't put it down. Are you counting Lord of the Rings as a war movie? No, no. Nope. <laughs> uh, as I, I was, I, I was like, then I'm bringing that Empire <laughs> Strikes Back. And you're going over there. As I was reading it, I was thinking, are they? How would they ever make? There's a couple scenes that are so important. How would they ever make this into a movie? And I, it, it, um, I'm gonna put it on my list only because. The book was so poignant for me in my life, uh, and it helped change my mindset in general about a lot of things. And it's a movie called Lone Survivor. And, and the Mark Wahlberg one? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to add that in just because <coughs> the book and the movie combo um, changed me. So it, because and the movie, boy too. Yeah, because yeah. the movie changed. Because the movie and the book changed me and the way I look at things. I have to put it on there because it was, might be, and it's timing of everything. Yeah, the most influential, as far as how I my outlook on things and the war and. I didn't even think about that. So it's not going to be on my list, but that's a great call. But man. for me, yeah. that combo uh, changed me more than any other war movie. So I have to put it in. Okay, I like that. It's making me think now. Um, all right, my second one is also obscure. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's a Vietnam film, and my uncle, who was a Vietnam veteran, um, I sat and watched it with, and he said that it was a truth teller. Um, it's a brutal movie to watch. Mm. It's called Hamburger Hill. Oh, yeah, I heard it. You know this one? Yeah. Have you seen it? Yeah, is it the Clint Eastwood? Uh, no, you're thinking of uh, Ridge, something Ridge. What was the Hamburger Hill one? Hamburger Hill is, it's not like a bunch of leading men no, type guys. No, I've seen it. Who were the guys? The whole, again, it's not guys you yeah, would yeah. know. And they're trying to get up this hill yeah. that is a fortified position, and they pretty much know they're all going to die. Mm -hmm. And it is a brutal movie to get through. But it was very, I was 12 when I saw it, but it was the 80s, it was 1988, my uncle was a hardcore motherfucker, so we sat and we watched Dude. that movie, so that's on my Mount Rushmore. That's a good one. If Full Metal Jacket, if there's, if the second half of the movie was any good, I would put it on there. My the uncle, first half I was, was gonna so say, that's not on my list, and to this day, is I've only seen it once, it's cause my uncle said it's a bullshit movie. The first he said, half? that's not how it was, he goes, they didn't get one fucking thing right, no. he's like, that's a bullshit movie. Um, and he was in it, so I was like, yes sir. I, <laughs> this is, one of my favorites, um, and there's a couple of old ones that I'm leaving out because I don't remember the names. There was an old one, a group that had Don Rickles in it. I remember, I forget. It Amazing. Was, I for, but he it was a serious movie, but I forget what the name of that was. So I'm gonna go with the original Dirty Dozen. Oh, that was my next one. Another I should have done it second. No, we I can knew still it. we can still put it on there. Yeah. But the original Dirty Dozen for me, I, it was so good across the board. They had Jim Brown run the 40 in what looked like four point flat oh, flat that dude was cruising with a grenade cruising. <laughs> yeah i love that one someone please uh, f what, whatever the name of don rickles yeah uh, the smart people will tell us i, I know that thank you so much but we go I, we both said dirty dozen for yes number three. and Pardon. my fourth is gonna be saving private ryan um but i want to tell you the scene that puts it on there for me. Okay. I'm watching this movie. I'm never a guy that yells out, right? I've just never been compelled to do that. Mm -hmm. And it's the only movie that has ever done it to me. And it was when, I can't remember the actor's name, he's Jewish. Yeah, I know you're talking about. And he's 
one-on-one -on -one hand to hand combat with this German Nazi scumbag and the fight is so intimate and the knife is so close for so long and he's like basically begging him not to kill him I legit yelled out oh fuck mm -hmm. and the whole theater like looked at me but they didn't get pissed because they were kind of like fuck <laughs> And to watch that scene, it literally, like, it sticks with me today. Like, my mm -hmm. eyes welled up. I, you know which movies it's I've a, cried in. It's a great Like, scene. it's not, it yep. never happens, like, because it's pretend. Yep. And I literally was like, good God, I can't even watch. Like, it fucked me up. Yep. A lot of you guys are going to want to throw Apocalypse Now in there. A lot of you guys are going to want to throw the uh, Casualties of War in there. I got one more. I respect those, but they just don't make my list. For me, number four, and again, this is without. And Michael J. Fox was dope in Casualties of War. Uh, yeah, he was. Um, the, uh, my fourth, again, I bet you I'll go home and do some research and I would come up with, By I, the would way, I would replace two of these. Neither of us have put a John Wayne movie in yeah. there, so we're uh, going to get our ass kicked. Guess what, everybody? Not a big John Wayne fan. I love John Wayne. I thought he was cool. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm with it, but I'm like, you know. He's cool, man. He's you know what cool. my number four is? What? Platoon. Oh yeah, and Platoon, that would be the other one. And Willem Dafoe was in that one or was he yes. in Casualties? Yeah, Willem was in that one. Amazing. He's the... Yeah. The, yeah, yeah, I just yeah, need yeah, to remember yeah, which yeah, one yeah, of those yeah. it's from. But Platoon, honorable mention for sure. Any of those three, and I would rank those Platoon, Apocalypse, Now, Casualties of War, if I had to rank them like gold, silver, 100%. bronze. 100%. Me too. Uh, gold, silver, bronze. But, uh, but just, I saw them at a different point in my life. Yeah, and a lot man. of the movies that I connected with were ones that my wars my family fought in. Um, and so I, that's by the why way, I connect more to them. I'm picking Lone Survivor over uh over tons of great movies. hurt locker oh God, I, over the one with chris pot with chris uh with not chris but bradley cooper yeah, uh, yeah. I, and and for me i'm I, I could put them all together because i'm i look at them now differently with my son in the army it's fun we, we right can, so they could all go together for me we, if you want we can end on this i almost made a war movie in like 1999. Really? And it was about this Latino sniper named Guy Gabaldon. And he was raised by white people, he was adopted. He went into the war and in Japan, and this isn't fake, this wasn't like, a, this is a true story. I'm gonna get the number wrong, but it was over 200 Japanese soldiers he got to surrender. And he was one sniper. Mm. One? Sniper, and I don't know how many days or how long this sort of encounter went on, but Google this guy, G U Y, Gabaldon, if you can't spell Gabaldon, um, with a G. This dude was such a G and such a sick shot that he made over 200 people go, Man, I'm not going out there. Fuck this. I give up. That's crazy. <laughs> Arigato, yeah. matane, I'm done. Fuck this war. Fuck you. Fuck your sniper rifle. Stop shooting us. And got a mass surrender. One dude. And they never got their financing. They were never able to pull it together. Um, so it never got made. But it's a really great story. If, if you know, old war stories are something you're interested in, check that out. That sounds amazing. Dude, what a beast, right? Yeah. I could never do that. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be either. like, can we just go get some sushi? <laughs> I've cleared out a movie theater with a fart before. That's like 200 Was people. it yours? You yeah. You cleared it? I cleared it. I didn't clear a whole theater, but I've cleared uh, some seats. Man, there ain't nothing to be proud about. You should be ashamed of yourself. I've cleared some seats on a plane. Why don't you clear out and then do your business outside and allow people to enjoy their film experience? Well, I don't want to miss the movie. You miss it if it's your guest. <laughs> Wait, I gotta walk out? You're damn sure I paid you gotta for the walk seat. out. They don't have to smell your ass. I push in the cushion. No, you didn't push it anywhere. No, that time I didn't. I let it fly. But sometimes you can push it in the cushion, and the cushion eats it. The cushion is like a fart no, purse. No, that time I didn't. <laughs> I let, it let it ride, everybody. We'll see you next week. <laughs> I let it fart. Not that one. I let the Yeah, cheese. I let the one.